Home race is great for, for any driver. What makes Silverstone special for you? What are the bits you like? Well, first of all, the negatives for me with Silverstone, I've never had a good result there. I've never been on the podium. My first year in the sport was probably my best year. I finished fifth, overtaking Michael Schumacher around the outside of Turn 1. Um, but since then, you know, just haven't got the result, whether it's been just not quick enough or, or had a bad pit stop where I lost a tyre a few years ago and I was looking forward to a second or third on the, grid, uh, on the podium. Um, so it's never really worked out for me, which is really frustrating because there's so much support from the home crowd. Um, they really do get behind you. There's so many Union Jacks, Rocket Red Caps, which is our team cap. And even in the dark days, you know, when things aren't going your way, you still get the support and you, you just want to repay them and it's, it just hasn't happened yet. So, you know, I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to fight as hard as I can to get the best result this weekend for, for all the fans in the UK. And there must be great childhood memories for you and Lewis as well of being mm. a fan at Silverstone. Yeah, I, I came here in 94 to, to watch the Grand Prix and I remember watching it, uh, Cops and Beckett's, which are two of the, the high speed sections on the circuit. And just watching the cars go around, I mean, hearing the car, smelling the car, seeing the change of direction, these things are phenomenal to watch in, on TV, but in reality, it's another level. Um, so, yeah, to, to actually be racing that car around Silverstone, those type of cars around Silverstone now, really, really does mean a lot to me. You're almost an elder statesman now. Do you, do you ever, when you're driving the car, think, this is the dream come true. Do you ever sort of, are you able to yeah. sort of step back from I, that? I still do that every time I jump in the car. You know, every time I jump in the car, I hear the engine start up. They wave me out the garage, I close my visor, I hear, I, you know, I hear the engine, I know I'm in control, 750 horsepower beast. And for me, that is, it is a dream come true. And I still get that, that sort of buzzy, fluttery feeling when I exit the pit lane, when I accelerate. Um, I'll never get bored of that, and, and if I do, it's definitely time to retire. Other people think that motor racing is for posh kids. It obviously isn't. When you think back to those days of scrimping and saving, yeah. what, what, what do you remember most? Well, I'm, I'm a boy from Somerset. That uh, We lived in a little cottage in a, in a, in a village called Robster. Um, I lived with my dad um, at that point, and uh, I was lucky enough that he could afford to buy me a go-kart but I think he spent all his money on it. And um, we had to, to borrow money to go racing. Um, and there was one race in Scotland, and if I didn't do that race, I definitely didn't have a chance of winning the British Championship in karting. So he had to borrow um, money just for fuel to get up there for us to race. I won the race and I won the British Championship and uh, obviously helped my career. But yeah, they were, they were tough times, you know. Um, we didn't come from a wealthy background. and. Uh, you know, I'm sure that's the same for many sportsmen. Um, the difference with motorsport is to be able to afford a cart itself is very difficult. You know, I think at that time it was about 600 pounds in the late 80s, which is quite a bit of money. Mm. Um, but, um, you know, he, he put everything into that and he, he saw something in me um, in, in terms of natural ability. And uh, it's something that we, we did on the weekends and it was a real family thing.